Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Grassroots Chats, Play to the Whistle. This is the last episode of pre-season, ladies and gentlemen. The Premier League will be back next weekend, but it's not about the Premier League. Right now, we are going to talk about the Lionesses. But before we start, ladies and gentlemen, follow us on all socials at Grassroots Chats. And all our content can be found on www.grassrootchats.com. Please press that red button, follow, you know, subscribe, and be part of the Grassroots Chats family. Running out of today's show, the Lionesses victory, bringing, bringing home that gold. We look at the Premier League with who will win and all the other tournaments. And of course, we'll talk about if Ronaldo will actually stay in the Premier League. And we shall do our Premier League fixtures. Big Steve, he came home finally. After 55 weeks after the men tried, now the women have brought it home. How happy are you to see that happen? <laughs> I'm happy for the lionesses that it happened. <laughs> now, at the end of the day, winning a trophy in your sport... Um, it's a good thing. Um, they they done what they had to do. They beat the teams in front of them um, and won the trophy. Um, we'll probably hear about it on the news for the next three years, but um, it's a good it's a good thing for them <laughs> to be honest. Hopefully, it opens up um, a lot of avenues in the women's game and makes it a, makes it bigger and better in this country, accessible to more people than what it currently is. So. Yeah. Okay, Donk, I'm pretty certain that you would have a go or you have something to say about how wonderful this team is because of their manager. So, how wonderful do you think the manager is? How, how do you know I was going to say that? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, I, have, I have magic, man. Magic. Yeah, I, th I think, like, yeah, first of all, like, fair play for the victory in the tournament. Uh, no mean feat. And uh, I, I forget what the stat was. Germany are, are like serial winners of that competition. So they came up against Germany in the final, took it right to the wire and were able, unlike the men's team, as normally goes, where they end in a bit of failure somewhere along the line in penalties, they managed to pull it through in the last like five minutes of the game. So a uh, good, good way to show a bit of resolve there and take, take down one of the major winners of that tournament. Um, so there's that first, yeah. And then, like I said, I, th I think the manager has made a big difference. Um, she won the last Euros held in 2017 with the Netherlands. So she's she's worked to that level and she's experienced success at that level. Um, and I I would say like that we probably wouldn't have seen them winning today uh, with one of the previous managers they've had. So yeah, I'm going to give a lot a lot of credit to the manager uh, for getting them over the line with the experience she's had. I mean, when you look at the fixtures, they played Austria, Norway, Northern Ireland, Spain, Sweden, and of course, Germany. Mr. Hinder, how proud are you as an Englishman right now? Oh, I'm really pleased for them. You know, I think that they're winning the Euros is, is an amazing thing for uh, for the Lionesses. It's it, that's the competition. All they can do is win it. That was it was theirs for the taking. Don't get the nail on the head having a, and a manager who is of that ilk, um, that experience pays dividends. Um, a, a serial winner that wants to go out and play that. You've got to play with with what you've got. <clears throat> there was moments of the game to, uh, in the final that wasn't pretty, a lot of moments that weren't pretty, and a lot of, of, of bits of magic that were that were good. But ultimately, it doesn't matter if it's a dazzling performance or it's a rubbish performance. All that matters is, is, is you win and you get over the line. And I think they did that. And the game management at the very end was superb as well from from them. And they should be uh, applauded for that side of things. I think it's 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 really good for women's football that, that, that they've won. And I mean that like to get the name, to get the brand out there, to get it the, uh, the prominence that it deserves, um, the accolades to start giving it that platform that we, that it deserves. And I know it's going on the TV again. I think it's getting a Sky. I might be wrong here, but I think it's getting a Sky Sports treatment this season. Um, much better than it was before. Well, they're going to have match buildups, et cetera, for, for the game. So that's all really, really important. They're, they're in kit, which is again, massively important for branding. The whole thing of getting more money into the sport to make it better for them to be able to be professionals and then be able to reach the actual pinnacle that they can possibly get is down to money and that sounds really really bad but it is you don't have to have a job on the side you've got people i mean 
some of the stats for the professionals of what they earn, it's between twenty and 40,000 roughly that they're earning per year. This isn't per month, by the way, it's per year. The top, I think, weren't 400,000 uh, a year ago in America, 400,000 US dollars. So the money is, is, is amazingly different. And they're training, they've got to get there, they've got to get back. And sometimes some of them will have other jobs. I'm assuming the full-timers won't, but a lot of the other levels uh, possibly possibly do so bringing that up and having full-time football uh football players is going to be fantastic the more that they can get and the more leagues that they can get and the more competitive they get the better it is for everybody involved with it and and that will help cement more teams and locally in the in the community um and i think that's really really important for any community to have a local team in order to build the brand up it's hard when we're so male focused and male dominated, and I don't mean that in a, in a negative way. I'm a Sheffield Wednesday fan. That's the football that I want to say I like. That's what I've been lumbered with for the for the for a long period of time. And the England men's team that they're very very different and fundamentally different between the the patriotism and the football that I've watched and, and like. It's not like I don't watch the Olympics or any other bits and pieces that isn't this is some sport, but I'm not into it as much. But having success helps breed that. When I was young. And you, you're about, about to, you used to get a lot of Man United supporters. I live in Swindon, right? We had a Man United shop. So just to give you an idea of what success does, that generates interest and intrigue and fans. And that's the most important bit from this come from this. And that has to be built upon on the grassroots level, whether that's the... Um, we need to cement, I want to say, the legacy. Unlike the Olympics where it fell off, and I don't think anyone cares about most of those sports and, the, and, and that grassroots level, unfortunately, anymore, there was no legacy at the end of it other than West Ham having a lovely stadium, right? That's the only legacy that everyone remembers from, from that, which is a shame. And I'm hoping this is the complete opposite and it starts propelling them up because they've reached the pinnacle of what they what they were in and that's, that's, that's fantastic. And I'm really pleased for all of them involved that, that won. They looked really emotional and really happy afterwards and you can't ask for any more in your job than that. Okay, in terms of catching up to male football as been mentioned, Big Steve, so success, you know, will bring in a lot of marketing, people will be more interested but now how key or important is it that they keep that success going because as Mr. Hinder has mentioned, you know, the Olympics are wonderful and then things started dropping off. When you look at the US female team and where they had the case to argue that they needed to be paid the same as men, their major argument was we have brought more trophies, we have brought more, you know, awareness to the sport of soccer, football, whatever you want to call it. Now, with the Engl- with the Lionesses and the way in, um, women's football is in the country now, there's still a lot of awareness that has to come. There's still a lot of, you know, branding and marketing. So is this win the beginning? Yeah, I, I would say um, not the beginning because um, that started a little while ago, but I would say it definitely gives it a big shot in the arm um, to get more of the club, football clubs involved in it and all having their own women's team because even some of the big clubs, they only put women's teams together in the last couple of years. Is that because to, of marketing and not making... Because at the end of the day, football is a business. So I yeah, think probably trying it, to say that we're not be, we won't be able to make money back. So it shouldn't, we shouldn't really invest in this. Is that what yeah, they Yeah, they didn't want to invest in it because it wasn't bringing in a return. I think now um, this has a platform to push it out there more, to get more women's football clubs involved, and then they'll get more money. As, as Neil says, it's it kind of like breed success, success breeds investment to breed success, to breed investment, to breed... And it's a circle. So if they don't use this platform to create a legacy, you can't... It will never happen. Because okay. you, you, they've won one of the... What, they won the Euros. The only thing above that is the World Cup. So if they can't use this as a springboard to generate interest in the sport, then I don't see how they do it. Okay, so the two scorers, Chloe Kelly from Manchester City and Ella Tone from Manchester United. Oh my God. So uh, victory coming from Manchester. Was it written in the stars, Dunk? Because the German top scorer, Alexandra Pop, got injured just before the game started. So obviously that was a big boost for the Lionesses. Yeah, obviously you don't want to you don't want to take that angle though, do you, JJ? I'm just asking. <laughs> I'm just asking. You know, it was just bad. Asking. It was bad for Germany. Yeah. So obviously, if you don't have to face like one of the the top scorers in the tournament, it's going to be uh, beneficial to your team. Um, yeah. So like, it's been looking good ever since they smacked Norway in the the group stage. Uh, that they might go on and do it in the tournament. Uh, and again, like they they 
they've dispatched of Germany in the final. It went to extra time. They had to resolve to see it off. So, and and they scored in the last five minutes. So, yeah, in in the stars, JJ, it was, it was in destiny. The stars. Okay, so I'm going to ask two very uncomfortable questions. The first one I'm going to ask is Mr. Hinder. Why is it when you're talking about male football, you say we, but they are talking about the lionesses. You have been saying they. Well, easy. I'm a male, so I used to play male football, not female football. When I was yeah, a it was kid. about supporting the country, though. Yeah, you, you might have been a bit more successful in female football, Neil. Just to, <laughs> um, I doubt. It. I still, still think most of them are probably better than me as well. Though I'm not not say, saying the skill level of those today that wasn't wasn't great. They they were pretty decent, most of them. Um, we because again, I go to the fact that I'm an England football fan of the male team, and that's the way that I've. Uh, rightly or wrongly if uh, i'm brought up that way because that's what there was to support and again the same is like um i'm a wednesday fan then rightly or wrongly i'm a the, the you know the football team was the male team it's chris waddle that got me really into the football um so you have these uh, affinities with with them w w female football wasn't really about when i was a kid in the 80s if it was it was really really untalked of i used to play football with a few girls and they were very, very one of them was better than way way better than me actually one of the best players i've ever seen play she was amazing um so she was really really good but there wasn't many people playing football football back then so it's always going to be they i don't want to get on the coattails and say yes i'm part of it and i'm 100 percent behind because it's not i'm not behind it or i'm against it that's a clear 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 difference i'm not against it i'm all up for it i'm not just going to go we just because they suddenly won they have done a fantastic job i wouldn't have won it in the male team either so it was still be they won it but I'll be more part of that because that's part of my, I, want, I don't want to say DNA, but that's part of my growing up. That's part of my love for football is, is, is my country in that side of things. But women's football, we haven't, haven't really, really get maybe in 20 years time and I'm more used to it and I'm more used to watching it. And I know the players' names because I'm struggling to remember the names. I'm struggling with that element of it. But with the male football, because we watch it so much and the exposure is massive, I live it and breathe it. I mean, I watch five Premier League games a week easily, plus all the European football and the Championship football if it's on, and a little bit of league when as and when I can for my team. So I watch a lot of football. There's not much room in my life for any more. I, li I like, but, I like, I like that you mentioned the in. room. I like that you mentioned the room for football, which will make me ask, which will make me, you know, come up with another question. But my second uncomfortable question goes to Big Steve. Do you think one of the things that Neil has mentioned is? With male football, loads of males supporting. Do you think there'll be more awareness for female football if more females watched it? Instead of jumping on there when there's a tournament. But in terms of supporting the day-to-day, -day, the Premier League and all the other fixtures. Because a lot of the people that I know, especially when you see on TV, Ian Wright is one of the biggest supporters of um, women's football. Big. He's always, you know, using his platform to share it. Do you think that support can become better if females and women watched more of the female football? No, nah, it just needs to be people. Doesn't doesn't matter which sex it is. It just needs to be more people need to watch football, and the same and the exposure needs to be on comparative levels to the men's game. That's where they need to be looking at the re the reason why the American um, ladies soccer team can turn around and say that they want equal rights and equal pay as the men's game is because their game is actually more developed than the men's game in the States. So they're, they're, they're in a much stronger position. Whereas here, that's not the case. So Dunk, to, to... What, what are you trying to say? What are you trying to say, Dunk? I, I feel like Dunk, Dunk wants to say something. Yeah, so that like that that's a big step because I can say from experience like there's sports I watch like rugby for example where I'd be really invested in the national team and I've got no interest in the club game. So right, rightly or wrongly, like Mike's again, like like said Neil said, our exposure to it, like I've been exposed to the English national rugby team. I've watched the games on TV, like the club games are on Sky. I I don't have Sky at the minute, like because I would I'd be going somewhere to watch it. And um, but that would be an example, and I've watched them for like years and years. I watched them, the English team win the World Cup in two thousand and three, but I I've never really wanted to get into club rugby. There's probably other sports where I might watch a bit of the cricket where they've been successful in finals and I wouldn't follow any particular cricket team either. So it's, it's a big step to like get that, get them into the club game. Um, but again, like uh, at this stage, 
ho- hopefully some of it will, will translate, but they can definitely generate interest in, in the, the national game. Dunk, thank you very much. Mr. Hinder, want to add to that? Yeah, I just want to touch on something that Steve said about just getting people involved to watching it. That's 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 a, a, a great idea from the outset. The more people they have watching it. But to me, they need to appeal to to, to girls and to women. And I mean this in, in a way to, to build the sport up, right? If no males watched football, we wouldn't have any new youngsters coming through or wanting to be the next Chris Waddle with the mullet, the Gaza haircuts, the Beckham haircuts. Do you know what I mean? The whatever I don't know who kids have watched now and, and who Pogba. they want Ronaldo Pogba, Pogba haircuts. Do you know what I mean? Like the haircuts, the players, the, the things, the the icons that you have that you grew up at you that you're just in love with are on on that level of like this guy's just the best, right? It doesn't matter who, and then they leave your team, and you're really upset and hate them. But you have that kind of thing, and the girls need role models. They need to look like, and I want to be her, or I want to be like that, or that one plays brilliantly. Not Ronaldo plays brilliantly, uh, or my dad wants me to play. Like they've got to want the exposure and 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 to have that. The fact that we said that football is a sport, and in there we need the government. So take away slightly the, the aspect of, of 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 that. The government we need to make more of an effort with grassroots football, and actually help him to promote to get more girls and more accessibility of girls into the game. And that may that way you then have that kind of uh, knock on effect. And it's generating that interest for girls to want to watch football, to want to play football. Um, I'm not an old Neanderthal, but sometimes I probably do come across as one. But I was born in 82, so I'm used to watching football with my dad, watching it. And I'm, I'm quite old in, in certain aspects. But that's kind of what, what you have. To try and get my daughter involved to watch football, it's kind of been a different experience. Yes, she'll watch certain games and she says she's a Wednesday fan, etc. But getting her involved in having some kind of connection to a player is very, very hard for her to want to be somebody else. So actually having them in there uh, is really important. And I think having the role models, the accessibility to go and watch your local team, regardless of how good they are, and thinking, I could do that. That's really good, right? I don't think I could ever go and play Premier League football, but I've watched some Sunday League when I was younger. Oh, I could give that a go, right? And I could get into that. But I, I know my level, but that's, that is really, really important. And having that locally at any level is really, really important to get more people in. So I'm hoping that the platform for this is ridiculously bigger than it, than it needs to be. The song and dance of, of, of winning it is actually secondary to everything else that's going on. The fact that it was a full stadium today, a full house, that potentially means there's some good money in it, which means there's some good investors. But what we need is we need the accessibility of the young, the youngsters to be able to go. And more than, oh, you've got one club locally and they play between seven and eight and they practice on a Thursday. And you can only go here. You've got no other choice. You've, you've got this one club or you've got that. And it, but all the girls play on one day. What do you mean they all play on one day? Like, like, so that has to change and that is the way that, that that will come through. And hopefully, I know this is a long run, but hopefully, hopefully, hopefully the players themselves make the platform for themselves from this. And that's really, really key because they're the voice. They're the voice of the girls that have been and gone through the trenches and gone the hard way and become the pioneers of it. Um, and I'm not, and that will elevate everything to, to, to that bit. Uh, and, and that's what I'm excited about. That's the excitement from it. I, I'm happy I think it, for it. I think it'd be well, cool in schools. I think schools will push it a lot more uh, after this oh as God, well. I hope so. And, and like in schools, the, the girls will have the bragging rights now because you know England. Women, if it is we us and them, like the men and the women, they've got the bragging rights because England women have actually won it. You know, I'm I'm sure the the boys will make excuses like, oh, it's 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 harder to win the men's championship or something like that. But you know, they've got bragging rights, and you know, I think it'll be picked up a lot more in schools, and maybe they'll even be the boys and girls will be playing each other. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. From the Grassroots Chat Studio, we salute the Lionesses. Sarina Wigman is the manager. We congratulate you for your win today and thank you for bringing victory to the English female football team. Okay, at some point we will join the party. Hopefully there'll still be a few beers left. But we had the Community Shield, ladies and gentlemen, with Liverpool playing Man City, the cotton raiser for the Premier League. The Premier League begins... On Friday, the 5th of August. But this was the battle of the big two forwards. The two signings. Darwin Nunes for Liverpool and, of course, Haaland for Man City. Now, the first question goes to Big Steve. Big Steve, is this 
Are we seeing a change in system and a change in format for both Liverpool and Man City? Are they actually playing with a point man? Yes. When Nunes is on the pitch, Liverpool will be playing with a point man. Um, it, I don't. I know they've used Firmino in the past, but I don't think Nunes will be coming as deep to link up play and then playing into the likes of Salah and Mane ahead of him. I think Nunes will be a real focal point um, for them and they'll play up to him and then off him in and around the opponent's 18-yard box. Um, City, yes, it's a change for them as well because Haaland isn't going to be um, coming deep too often. Um, he can play up on the last... He'll be playing up on the last defender. Um, and I can even see them playing a two up top as well. With Al- Is it Alvarez and Haaland as a two in some games? It's um, a frightening prospect, to be honest, for the rest of the league because if the, both of those forwards click, it takes both of those teams up another level. Is it that frightening, Mr. Hinder, in what the way Big Steve has described it? Because... Based on the systems they used to play, for example, with Firmino, it means that the midfield was a bit packed because he used to drop deep. They were not particularly allowing him, wanting him to score as many, but he was dropping deep to help, you know, Mane at the time and Salah and other forwards to go. So now, if they're going to play them as point men, which means they have to stay more in the box, does that make City and Liverpool a bit easier to play against? No, not easier at all. Um, I think... It's it's going to be interesting. I, I don't think we can read too much into they're playing like amazingly different football. All right, there's there's a slight tweak. Uh, but Salah, I mean, no disrespect to Salah, he's getting a little bit older, so maybe he'll he'll appreciate the fact that he's got a bit of young pace in the centre of the park. That's that's happy to be the pivotal man. Um, but that also might make him hunger as well, and more of a uh, a point. He hasn't got any points to prove, but a personal point to prove each game that he's still the main man. If that makes sense. Um, I see kind of more of a, I know it's really early days, a torres type role uh, coming in and developing from from Nunes for, from that element of it. Hitting the ground running is going to be key. The defending was absolutely woeful for his goal on on the weekend and the penalty was, yeah, awful decision-making as well. On that side of things, that was just woeful defending. Um, but I'm not seeing a massive going to be a massive change. It's it's going to be a little bit of a change to the system from from their point of view. And then if you look at uh, cities, it's just going back to the Aguero, but with a uh, a faster a faster pace. Your Aguero, he's basically what he wanted Aguero to be. Highland is because he wanted that closing down. He wanted the the predator in the box, but he wanted to be able to go backwards and forwards. And I think uh, at Dortmund, Highland was was all over the pitch as well. The guy's got an injured for days. You know, we're not talking of just a a. a pivotal centre forward and I think you're maybe doing a little bit of a disservice to especially to Haaland because I've seen him play play a bit more about where he will and won't be playing I think that he will become a better football all around who's doing uh, a disservice to you were saying you can be more pivotal at the top and I'm just trying to say that I no, think no, I that say he that. will yeah you did no I didn't you asked if we'd be changing the system because they've got a, a focal point at the top because so, how is that, so how is that I will disservice? go back and on TikTok we'll share that video so of where how you is that a that. disservice so asking if they will play with a point uh, man I think the two is... boys agree here but as you said an appointment and I don't th- I think that's a disservice to say that they're going to be appointment I don't no, think no, that I, I understand like that, that you think that but how yeah. is it that don't get touchy about it Harland <laughs> give him a call tell him you're more than appointment you could do this that I think that yeah he's basically the agro that he uh, that Pep always wanted and I think this is the perfect type of Pep, Pep player okay uh, on a lot of so, Haaland is the Aguero that Pep has always wanted, according to Mr. Hinder. Um, Donk, you said that you believe that Haaland, from some previous episode, you believe he's going to be a force in the Premier League. You believe there's no stopping him. He had an off day yesterday. But apart from, you know, not pretty much scoring the chances he had, are you convinced, are you still convinced he's going to be that force in the Premier League? Absolutely, because he's had, what, do you have two, two, three seasons at Dortmund? And he, he scored nearly a goal a game. Like So I'm not going to judge him on one one game in the Community Shield. Um, still still think he's going to be a huge force. Still think he's going to be great. Obviously, he only played his first game, was it last week? I think he only played one friendly before for Man City. So that's his second ever game for Man City. Um, as we've been discussing here, there, there's got to be some change in the tactics to accommodate him because they haven't had that great like target man a bit more don't, don't say Neil that is it no, no, Neil said he's a bit more but it's, he can, it's a disservice don't he, say he's that gonna be, 
target man and more, but they haven't had the target man, you know. So uh, they, they, yeah, they they're going to adjust their system around, and um, he's he's going to score goals. That was against Liverpool. That was like the the second best team in the country behind them. They're not playing Liverpool every week. They're they're playing Brentford and Forest and Bournemouth and <laughs> whoever else and Harlem. United. It, <laughs> <laughs> and and Harland, I stand by it. Harland is going to get goals, like particularly against those teams. Okay, I, I think I think the um, major thing as well is once he gets the correct understanding of each other's game of people like De Bruyne and Grealish, and they see the runs that he makes and can pick out the passes. Um, because their midfield is now going to have more time on the ball because Harland can occupy the defenders. You can't just squeeze Man City and stuff because if he stays further or if he stays up the pitch more um, and he's got pace to go in behind, people like De Bruyne, they can operate that num- in that number 10 role and have a lot more space than what they were getting previously. So it's going to be interesting when they actually click and he can they can thread ball through to him. So now the question here, Big Steve, is this, have we, have we already seen top two English Premier League this season? Yeah, not unless something freak happens. I can't see um, any of the other sides um, displacing the two of them, to be honest. Okay. Top two, Premier League, Liverpool, Man City. Haaland will definitely look, you know, look stronger, score more goals. Mr. Hinder, you mentioned when we were talking about players that City should buy. From that defending that you saw yesterday, and Ake is still in the Man City team, are you even more convinced that they need to at least beef up that defence or just yesterday another one-off? I think they've struggled defensively for years since company was there and left. I think they've really... They don't, they've got some decent ball players, but they haven't, got, they haven't had a defender. Laporte seems to be injured more than a, an old horse, which I think is a, a, an issue for them. He's a very, very good defender. But they can't get a pair in. And when you're bringing Aki in, who you potentially wouldn't have to get rid of anyway, John Stones, I mean, John Stones couldn't even get an England game for for, for a while. Um, there's, They definitely should be looking at centre-backs, but I'm not even sure Pep cares so much uh, about that area of the pitch. It's very much a, we'll have the ball, we'll play football. This is how we play football and this is what we do. We don't need that rock solid defender that we would have like, So as he just solved as he just solved the strike issue to ruin the defense issue and then ruin the defense. No, no, he's he by buying a striker, they're better defensively. Because the ball by and even what Steve was saying, the through balls that they can now put, the, uh, the long balls, it would be if it was Sam Allardyce in the team, but those pinpoint balls that will go through and he will be on the back man, that takes all, all the work away from the defence. Duncan hit the nail on the head as well with the fact that they're not going to play Liverpool every week. But that defence is ropey at best, those, those two centre backs. In the Arsenal team, and Arsenal will be really, really struggling with those two at the back because they need better centre backs than, than that. They're better ball players, but they're not that great defensively. And that's the problem that they, they will have and why they ship so many goals um, against the real good teams who can just carve them apart really easily. I mean, I think Nunes' header, that was like woeful defending. I mean, I know it was a charity shield, but in an important game, you, you, I would be absolutely livid at that particular point. They're making him look 10 times better than he really is finding that much space. So, yeah, they're, they're issues they've got. But I say Haaland improves you defensively anyway because he's going to be that that good. Well, as a as Amanda sees the future, Big Dunk, you know how you like your, your predictions and saying what will happen in the future. David Nunes, Haaland, who scores more goals this season? Oof. Oh, oh. Tough one. Uh, that that's like that's like really <laughs> close. But uh, if you're going to push me an answer, I will I will plump for Haaland. Why? Why not? <laughs> I said it would be really close. <laughs> I'm going with Haaland. I think he'll get. I think he'll probably get more opportunities in the Man City team. You know, creating chance. Like they're both going to get tons of opportunities. They're both going to score lots of goals. Um, I just if you're going to force force me to choose one, I won't sit on the fence. If you're going to force me to choose one, I'll go with Haaland. Like it, it, that could quite easily go uh, either way. Okay, ladies uh, and gentlemen, this is. Wait, what, wait, wait. Uh, I'm not even going to hesitate on that one. Okay, Ireland, easy. Because, easy. Yeah, because I don't know if Nunes even outscores Salah in the Liverpool team. Ooh. 
Well, so, a change of system he might do if he's going to be the focal yeah, but, point. But is, is Salah then now going to turn provider? Not naturally in his game. He will, he will give some assists, but he's about goal scoring. So to me, I don't even think Nunes outscores Salah in the Liverpool team for to say he's going to outscore Haaland. Haaland doesn't have that competition in the Man City team. Okay. It's all about him getting the goals. Mr. Hinder, you might as well jump in. What are you seeing? Same? Wow, well, those two. If it's yeah. just that of those two, then Haaland will score more because he'll play more. Nunes won't play every game. Jota will... There's, there's, let's not forget Jota's been banging goals in and he's a decent, decent, viable option Jota, in that Jota, team, right? Jota is still decent. He's still not yet world-class. Just checking. No, well, they, they replaced him. I mean, I hate to say, they didn't play, spend £86 million on a player that they were thought they were going to stick on, stick on the bench. But that just shows that the goal that they had to get to get that next quality... They could have got Richardson, right? But they didn't. They went out and, and went, got their man at the, the, for 86 mil. So he's definitely replacing Jota. Richardson's nice come to Liverpool from Everton. In what world? What world do you think, do you think that would have happened? I, I don't think he's got much loyalty, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, in a, in a world where <laughs> Liverpool would have offered him a fat contract. That's where, <laughs> where it would have happened. And, and Everton aren't replacing anyone anyway, so who... Hmm? well think, ladies yeah. and gentlemen there you have it but now at this point since we're talking about the new Premier League I'm going to ask the gentlemen first thing we're going to talk about who they think will win the Premier League no sitting on the fence uh, in fact who you think will win your top four as it stands and then we'll talk about who wins the FA Cup and the League Cup and the players you want people to watch out for this season it could be from any team so let's start with you as I always like to start Big Steve Let's go. Top four. Who wins the league? Let's start Man with that City first. win the league by a, a bigger distance than what they just did. Liverpool second. Um, third and fourth comes out of three teams. It's a choice of... Actually, I'll, I'll go Tottenham third, Arsenal fourth. Because I don't think Chelsea are going to get the top four with their current situation and manager. Okay, this, is this because they haven't been buying anybody, or you just feel Tuchel has lost it already? I think I think Tuchel doesn't. There seems to be no plan as to what he's uh, what he's doing and what he's. They just seem to be trying to get anybody, and they can't. There's no plan. People are wanting to leave the club. They're not getting their targets. They wanted to get Ake from Man City as their main centre back when he's not even considered first team for Man City. It's yeah to me. They're just in a mess. Okay. Mr. Hinder, your top four, who wins the league? Second, you know? Uh, I I agree with um, Steve with the Chelsea situation. It's a bit of a weird one there still at the moment. Um, we did an episode that didn't air and we have discussed this already. And I'm, and I'm a modest man, right? And I'm going to carry on with that. Uh, JJ, you were away sunning yourself in... Um, wherever you were at that particular point in, uh, in our life. Uh, <laughs> Sell it, selling myself how? No, sunning. 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 Oh, okay, if you were sorry. selling yourself, that's a whole <laughs> different story, man. But I just thought you were enjoying some some rays, not not selling yourself. But anyway, <laughs> what? Hey, look, if the guilt's there, man, the guilt's there. Right, um, rays? What, rays in pay from selling himself? <laughs> <laughs> uh, for the team to win, I'm going to go with Spurs still. Huh? I don't know. I was, yeah, Spurs. Spurs top four, win it, winning the Prem. Outsiders, Conte, out of all the money, he's got something, he's got the bit between his teeth this 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 season. The big outsiders, don't put your mortgage on it. All right. If anyone's listening, don't this this is a good little tip for a ten pound bet or something. Not not your mortgage or your house, your wife, the car, the Maserati, none of that. Just just a ten pound bet on on Spurs to win the league. Um I think he's made some good signings. Steady progress, right? We've we've said it before. We, the teams making some steady progress is, is really important rather than, than a monumental shift. Um, I think Man City will be third, Liverpool second. Uh, Man City are going to focus on on the uh, Champions League. I'm also betting that Haaland doesn't play much more than six months of the season because he gets a massive injury. Uh, I've got the ball out. I've got the what? whole so, goddamn is, thing out this it, season. And fourth, it, go on. Is is some is Mr. is is Mr. Hinder all right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just continue. Continue. So Sorry. Spurs. Yeah. Spurs. Liverpool. Man City. Yeah. And then fourth. Let's stick. Um. Let's stick Arsenal for fourth now. I think. Okay. 
good preseason. Seem to be doing. I mean, it's, there's not much to judge a see. I've played uh, football manager for years. A good preseason is nothing to judge an actual season by. Um, but they look like they're gelling at the moment, and I think they'll be 15 of the bottom teams, and then again continue to struggle on the top half of the uh, of the league. But definitely, again, there's been steady progress at, at Arsenal. It's, it's, it's kind of good to see that you've got Spurs and Arsenal doing steady. You've got Man City that uh, are just buying top, top quality. And again, with Liverpool, just buying, they're just looking to improve. They're not just getting bums on seats. It's not, uh, oh, we want Frankie de Jong, you know, but we're not going to pay for him. Uh, it's not that type of scenario at these clubs. They're like doing steady... I wonder steady, who he's taking the dig at down. Steady progress, right? Um, and yeah, and that's, that's my top four. Interesting, okay. right? Very interesting. And please, please, if you don't listen to this guy, listen to him now. Don't put your mortgage on it or put anything else other than a tenner. Please. All right. Big Dunk, please. What do you have? Your top four. So again, from, from the episode that didn't air, I think we most Stop of us Stop telling have... people it didn't air. I don't know. We're just, <laughs> we're being honest here. We're being honest here. So I think we had like, most people have Man City, Liverpool, Chelsea. And I, I agree with Steve. There's some like weird things going on at Chelsea. They're on about loaning out Werner, loaning out Kepa. Like they can't even get rid of the players they don't want. They're like loaning them out with, along with Lukaku as well. Uh, two shells been moaning away like to the press, even though they got new owners. They bought Sterling for 50 million. Um, ooh, at, the, at the top what, what will I commit myself to on record here will I commit myself to Man City or Liverpool go on I'll, I'll, I'll give Liverpool a shot then we'll, well, I'll go for Liverpool first I'll go for Man City runners up I will go for let's mix it up now I'll go for Arsenal third impressive pre-season like Neil said go on we'll give the Arsenal boys something to be happy about Although they wouldn't do it themselves because, you know, false hope and all that. But I'll, I'll give Arsenal third and I'll give Spurs fourth and we'll just kick Chelsea and Man U out of the top four. They can just stay out and we'll go for that one. Okay, so Big Steve has Man City, Liverpool, Tottenham and Arsenal. Dunk has Liverpool, Man City, um, Spurs and Arsenal. Oh, sorry. Arsenal and Spurs, sorry. Arsenal and Spurs, sorry, sorry. And <laughs> Mr. Hinder has Spurs to win the league, Liverpool, City and Arsenal. There is some strong thing in the air. <laughs> We've all got the same top four though. <laughs> yes, you do. Just arranged in a very wonderful musical cheers. Okay, but, there you but, go. But like, but like Neil said, we, we both play football manager. You can you can slap everyone down 5-0. And the minute you get to the first game of the season, you're away to Burnley. You're going down. Like, <laughs> Okay, there you go. You have the top four given to you by the gentleman in the studio. That's all good. Before we move on to who you think will win the League Cup or the FA Cup, one question, especially since you brought Arsenal into the top four. Um, Big Steve, how well do you think Jesus will do this season? And let's not judge from pre-season. I think he'll do very well. He's the striker that Arteta wanted to come to play the game the way he wants his, for his team to play football the way he wants to. Jesus works. He's got lots of energy, and he's very good in front of goal. Arsenal always Arsenal always create chances. The problems they've had over the years is that the forwards have not been clinical enough, um, and I think he'll get a, a lot of goals playing for Arsenal. Dunk, do you echo what Big Steve is saying? Gabriel Jesus will score 18 to 20 goals <laughs> this season. <laughs> Mark my words, it's in stone. He will score 18 to 20 goals. Just as he said in the last episode. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. And Mr. Hinder? Man, there's some crazy deja vu going on. That is all I can think of right now. Um, what, do I think he'll do well? Yeah, I mean, he's going to do well at Arsenal. How many games is he going to play with uh, Inketia there? That's the issue that you're going to have. He's got a. It's going to be a big demand on that team. There's a lot of pressure coming in now. With, su with such a strong preseason, there's been a lot of false hope, right? There's a lot of people getting a little bit excited about this this Arsenal team, and I don't mean that in a in a in a negative way. It's great that they're that they're making some good progress, but like you said, it's preseason. We don't know how well the other teams have been playing or preparing for the games or how much they cared about the games. But when you go into the real the real stuff, you've got nerves. Um, 
and we can only judge um, Gabriel on his preseason for Arsenal. He's not wearing an Arsenal shirt before that. We, we can only judge him at the moment. He knows where that net is. And that's the only thing he needs to find uh, hope for, for the Arsenal team, right? Is, is where it is. You want that guy to be the focal point to get you 20 plus goals this season. And I think if he does that, then regardless of where they finish, he's had a successful season. Um, Duncan's got him down for 18. So he's not top goal scorer. He's not top goal. So, so can we just find out who we think is going to be top goal scorer in the league this season is? Yes, we will get there. Are we doing that to today? Yes, we are. Oh man, stay tuned for that because that's coming up soon. If you didn't know, it wasn't mentioned (laughs) at the start of the show, but after the 38 minutes or 39 minutes, we are going to mention who our top goal scorers are. Have you ever heard, have you ever heard of giving the people some extra bit of juice that's what we're going to do. I tell everyone what, exactly what I'm going to do to them first. That's exactly why. <laughs> exa- everyone. Eh? All right. Good. Okay. Before we move on to highest goal scorers, let's quickly go through the cups. FA Cup, League Cup. Dunk. Uh, God, yeah. That's just putting us on the spot a bit. I mean, we all know. know these 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 cups can go a bit random. You can get uh, funny things happening. Uh, but like we said, in the past couple of seasons, the big teams have taken them seriously. Um, but because I gave uh, Arsenal over Spurs in the league, let's give Spurs... What will we give Spurs? Let's give Spurs the... Go on, we'll give them the FA Cup. Spurs, Spurs for the FA Cup. We'll give them that one. And then the, uh, the League Cup, I will give to... Uh, we'll give City the League Cup. They're going to take it seriously. So Spurs, FA Cup, City, League Cup. Big Steve? Yeah. Um, Spurs will win a cup. A I cup, think. huh? Okay. Yeah, they'll win a cup. Conte will, Conte will achieve that, I think, providing they keep hold of Harry Kane. Uh, <laughs> um, and the other cup will go to someone like... I want to go outside the top four. Um, let's go with Aston Villa. Hmm. I think I think you're a bit harsh on Spurs there. They've won the fourth place cup quite a few times now, Steve, <laughs> in the last few years. <laughs> Mr. Hinder? Uh, you know when you said you were looking for, for teams outside the top four, I thought you were going to say United uh, for a cup. <laughs> Just to really just drive that point. And then you're like, no, they're not even going to win a fucking cup this season. <laughs> Literally, boom. Ooh. West Ham, League Cup. That's a good shout. Good shout. Okay. West Ham, League Cup. And let's just throw it out, right? Because we all know Arsenal can't win anything. Uh, and we know Spurs are going to win the league. So Spurs aren't really going to care too much about the FA Cup. Liverpool can't seem to close much uh, of the important stuff against the big teams. So, I'm going to go with a real big outsider for the FA Cup. All right, massive outsider. I'm going to pick West Ham again. They're going to do the cup double this season. I think that's going to be where they're what they're looking for. They're not going to get. They're not going to win the league. They're not going to break top six. But cup double. That's a fantastic season, and they're doing strides as well in the transfer business. In the seriousness of the tone that Big Dunk said. Jesus who scored 18 to 20 goals. Dear Lord, please help the members of Grassroots Chats if my United wins anything. They will, I would be coming to people's <laughs> houses. What, just, just for a game? Yes, if they win a cup, <laughs> I would be coming to people's houses and spending... For, all right, anyway, moving on, people, moving on. We will eventually get to the, who the highest goal scorer will be in the league and, of course, probably even across Europe. Yeah, let's go extra. But before that... Big Steve, who's your player to watch this season? Who's the player you think will impress, will improve, will help his team massively? I'll be very important for the entire season. Player watch. Player watch. Mm. Who's going to step up? I'm going to exclude Arsenal players. I'm going to exclude Arsenal players. Um, I think um, Alvarez is going to be a big player for Man City. He's definitely good. He's definitely going to have an impact and <clears throat> and make a difference to them. That's the one I'll go with. And is this based on obviously maybe having a, a brief of a bit of history about the player before he came to Man City, or is this looking at what he did yesterday in the community show? This is known um, a bit of history before he came to Man City. Speaking to a couple of Man City fans who have been tracking him um, for a little while. Um, and yeah, and seeing what he actually done when he actually got on the pitch yesterday. Okay. Alvarez for Big Steve. Dunk. 
Uh, player to watch, I'm going to go for Sterling. So he's been, he's been part of that Man City squad for a good few years. Uh, he's scored a good few goals. Maybe hasn't got the credit he deserves. Uh, he's gone to Chelsea where he's going to be one of the big boys in that Chelsea squad. Uh, so play, player to watch, just see how, how he gets on. Now he's outside that Man City squad and he he wanted the, the step up to be like a more important member of a squad. Uh, so it'd be interesting to see if he's going to take that on, whether he's going to score as many goals for City as uh, for Chelsea. He was not going to score any goals for City. He's left them. <laughs> he's going to score as many goals for Chelsea as he did for City and whether he can kind of like lift them and carry them up to a, to another level, which we obviously haven't backed them to do because we didn't put them top four. Okay. And Mr. Hinder, player watch. Uh, I'm going to go outside the top four. Uh um, the season pr- pretty much pivots on Gianluca is it Scamacha for West Ham's new striker that they've signed. Uh, you know he's going to be playing because they haven't got a plethora of strikers that they're going to be picking between. A 35 million is is intent business from their point of view. And yeah, I think he will be a big improvement to that team. 24 goals in 65 games in Serie A. That is not bad for any striker. Um, so... Yeah, that's my player. And I'm really disappointed that Steve didn't just pick a random Arsenal player because he only had one that he was going to say, and that was it was Jesus. So, no. uh, <laughs> Shane, no bias. I didn't want to talk about Arsenal. <laughs> but you did the opposite just by avoiding it because you really yeah, yeah. meant Arsenal. But like, let me pick the second player that I'm going to be thinking of. I think Sterling's got to have a good season, hasn't he? So mm. just picking up on Dunk's point there, if this doesn't work out for Sterling like this season, what does he do? He cries all the way to the bank. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, 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 thing is, the, thing with, the thing is with Sterling, when, if you look at it, when he left Liverpool and went to Man City, he had a big tag on him then and he kind of, he stepped up. No, he didn't kind of, he did though. He, he, did. he stepped up. There was a lot of question marks and they stepped up. And to me, his personality is that he will do well there. It's but, just a case of, can he survive the turmoil yeah, because my issue, my issue isn't him. My issue is Tuchel. Yeah, he's just he's just a little bit whimsical, yeah. uh, moany. Like, is is that going to work? Because he's he's going to be so used to Pep, Pep style of this is what we do. This is what I'm expecting. This is happening. This is happening. You have to be here. You have to do this. You have to do that. And then he goes into this team that buys a player and then lets him go for seven million uh, on loan. So he's, there's this whole ethos of of of, of change, and I think. If it doesn't work out, is this Sterling's fault? Is this going to be Tuchel's fault? Um, and then he's he's played for everybody else at the top, hasn't he? Let, let me ask Arsenal you this, though. Let me ask you this. With Sterling, now that you guys are saying there's a possibility of it not working at Chelsea, and you think that's probably down to Tuchel. Sterling, though, apart from as an England player, he has never, in his career with Liverpool, Man City... He has never been looked at as, you know, like the saviour player. He has always been in and around other good players and he plays well, as Steve has said, he has stepped up. At this particular point for Chelsea, even if you think Tuchel might be the problem, um, Mr. Hinder, start with you. Do you think this is one time that Sterling might be the saviour player? Is that why you think it might not work? For me, Sterling is a fantastic player. He scores a lot of goals, and he's at that point of his career. He's, he's I, mean, I want to say like twenty nine. I'm not looking at Google, but I think he's like twenty nine. So he's at that point where this is like the, the I want to say the final big move. So this is where he's cementing in, in his prime, going to spend three years, and he should be scoring lots of goals. That Chelsea team doesn't score goals and play really weird football with two number 10s and a number nine that can't score or three number nines that can't score or a two 10s and an eight and a seven. Like Literally, they're just it's just so clueless there for the players that they've got and not trying to get the most out of them. I think letting Werner go on loan is just going to be ridiculous. Letting Kepa go, for me, I still think he's better than Mendy out on loan. Like They're not even... Like get them to, if they're going to go, get them to go to Premier League play, teams. You're not going to recoup your money for those players now if they go out and do well at these clubs. Seventy five million for a keeper, and then you lend them out to, to is it Napoli? I think he was rumored to be going out alone. They're not going to pay fifty million for a goalkeeper, seventy million for a goal. They're just not going to pay it. But get him to play Premier League football if you want. 
get, rebuild his confidence. Uh, um, I don't know maybe Lee, um, uh, Leeds, Bournemouth, someone like l- lower down in the Everton. You, do you know what I mean? Like lower, and I mean that in the nicest way. Rebuild his confidence. Do well for those clubs. Come back into the Chelsea fold. This is a move to get rid of him, but for no money. I don't remember the last time an Italian club spent big money on a player apart from the one that Arsenal was after. And that was literally the only time that I've seen an Italian club make a big signing for big money. So it's clueless from top to bottom. And I think that that needs to be resolved uh, um, at a really early point in this season. If he's moaning still in th- week three of August, two shall gone. How did we go from Sterling? How did we go from Sterling? To because Kepa it's not Sterling's and... fault. This is the problem. He's made a really bad move going to Chelsea under Tuchel. It's a good move under anyone else that's been there, but currently under Tuchel, a really, really bad move for, for Sterling. Do, do you want me to answer your question, JJ? Y- yes, please. Will Sterling yeah, yeah. be the saviour player? I think he will, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, like, again, like he's, he's got a 50 million price tag. Like, like we said, he has performed at Liverpool and Man City. Um, Maybe they're going to be relying on him more for goals in in that Chelsea team if they're looking to move out Werner. Maybe he's just going to play him play him through the middle, uh, and and be the goal scorer. But yeah, I, I think he is. Like when you look at the Chelsea squad, um, and their perform what they've got and their performances over the last couple of seasons, I think you can look at that and say yes, Sterling is the big player in that team, and like they they are probably going to be hoping that he is going to score goals and ignite something at the front. Like Neil said, when when they play, he's going to be the catalyst for them getting these goals, whether he's scoring them or whether he's creating them. Chelsea has always had a history of loaning loads of players out there, so this is not new, and I, I understand but that they're they're normally youngsters, not not yeah, like know, established first teamers that they've paid big money for. I understand. Sterling is twenty seven years old, though, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, yes, you're still right. This could still be the last big, you know. Feels biggest. like he's been around forever, doesn't it? Yeah, he's been he must have been on the scenes really young at Liverpool. I mean, I, I, I wish him really good luck because I think he's a fantastic football player. I just think it's the wrong time and the wrong move. Uh, right now for him he would have been better off at Arsenal and that pains me to say that but he would be better off at Arsenal under that team he would have been perfect for that for that team going to Chelsea nah at least there's a vision at Arsenal like you know what they you know what they're doing right and I think that's the they've got an identity whether it's good or not even maybe Man United like at least Ten Hag has established something in this preseason of what he is expecting from the players and he's definitely better than anyone else you've got on the wing Without a doubt, right? Could you imagine Sterling and Ronaldo in the same team? No, no. Well, the thing is, that, the thing is, I think that um, Sterling at last to show, um, to show is not going to be there for long. Probably ooh. be probably be replaced by Conte. <laughs> who has unfinished business? Who has unfinished business with Chelsea? Oh, that wouldn't go down well with Spurs fans, would it? <laughs> I know. Okay, not Sean Dyche. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. So now let us finally go to who. This gentleman I think will be the highest goal scorer in the Premier League. And then just to add um, some some salt to the meat, tell me how many goals you think that individual will score collectively, country, whatever, if he's in the Premier League, if he's in the Champions League, sorry. Mr. Hinder. Son. Mm, nice. Spurs. My, my whole thing's pinning on Spurs winning the league. And if Son doesn't get the most amount of goals, they don't win the league. <laughs> okay. Son. He's going to get 31 Prem goals this season. He is going to have a blinding season. I mean, he has to. If Spurs are going to compete at the next point, and he is that important to Spurs, he has to then then go on to that next that next level. And I think he, out of he's so underrated and underappreciated uh, 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 at the highest highest level. He is that good. If he played for someone else. The, pe- people would be literally having shirts with his name on at Barca, Real. Like he, he's he's that good. Man okay. City good, Liverpool good. Man City good, good, Liverpool good. Oh, I'd give him on the back of a Wednesday shirt. Son, if you're listening, we can't afford you or your wages. But if you fancy playing for free, pop down a Wednesday. Definitely have you. Okay, Mr. Hinder goes. Son, highest goal scorer, thirty-one Premier League goals. Big shout, Dunk. Haaland, twenty-six. Done. <laughs> it's as easy as that, JJ. Is that don't, easy? Don't That's question simple. my abilities. It's what's going to happen. 
You know, I'm not questioning it at all. Not questioning it at all. Your yeah, ability. but he's five goals behind Son. He can't be the top goal scorer <laughs> if he's only got 26. Sorry, I was talking about <laughs> real life now. <laughs> Sorry, man. Okay, I'm um, Big Steve. Um, it'll be Haaland, and I think it'll be probably about 29, 30 goals. 29, 30 goals. Haaland, yeah. and of course, Mr. Hinda goes for Son. And just because you guys particularly feel Tuchel is losing it or has lost it and things are crap at Chelsea. I'll ask you one more question. Starting again with Mr. Hinder, first manager to be sacked. Yeah, Tuchel, week two. (laughs) (laughs) He's clueless. I don't understand. I thought he was going to go on in the summer, week two. I don't think anyone else is is precocious at the moment. They'll all get a little bit of stay, but Chelsea are the only ruthless club left, I think. Okay. Big Steve? Um, yeah, first one for me will be to shell. Um, all, the other manag- all the other managers will get a stay of execution for a little bit longer because I think um, the hiring, firing and hiring is calmed down a little bit um, last season. It was, the people wasn't so quick to pull the trigger. I think the only one is to show because of the stature of the club, where they believe they should be, the new owners, and he's just not um, projecting the right vibes that he's got any form of control over what's going on there. Okay, and Dunk. Whilst it would be hilarious to say Ten Hag, I'm going to say <laughs> I'm going to say uh, Lampard week six. Lampard, go on, Frank, week six. <laughs> yeah, but I think Pochettino will then take over from Tuchel. Mm. Chelsea, Ooh. just to rub a little bit of salt in those Ooh. wounds, right? Just a little bit. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, the gentlemen, the lads in the studio have looked at the season to come, spoken about highest goal scorer, first manager to be sacked, picked their top four and their cup winners. So now, speaking about the Premier League starting, there was a lot of commotion and a lot of, is he going to stay, is he going to go? Ronaldo not starting the preseason in Man United for family issues and all of a sudden he flies in to talk to Ten Hag they say he's not staying he wants to play Champions League football Man United played a friendly against Rayo Valaciano if I pronounced that properly and uh, it was Vallecano Vallecano right. yep and it was a one all one all draw Ronaldo playing in that game so is it already a situation in terms of stability in the team if Ronaldo is deciding he's not going to play preseason and he wants to leave and but he still you know takes training this week plays in the friendly is it a situation that they have they have you know they have said oh no we're going to go trying to get other teams to come and buy him on you know beat for him and doesn't seem like anything is happening and then he has finally chosen okay let me just stay I have a one year contract at least let me play some football Big Steve, are we still going to see some dramatic changes before the window closes and Ronaldo will still leave? I think you'll see some dramatic changes. um, I'm not 100% sure he will leave because Man United can't seem to get the targets through the door. I think if they were getting people in, um, then their main targets um, are signing, then they'll put them in a much better position to say, you know what, we won't take take a transfer fee on him um, and then it's up to him to negotiate personal terms somewhere else and then he can take a baker if he really wants to go he would take a baker um but well, i think the he wants the champions is, league though that's the thing champions some of the league. clubs that's in the champions league will take him but the, but the problem is man united have to take the stance of they can't let him go because they can't get anyone else in everyone that they're rumored to want to buy anthony from um, ajax and they can't get them De Jong's not coming it's 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 bad for them so they can't afford to let him go at the moment. He was their top scorer last season as well. Big Dunk, what do you think of the situation with Ronaldo? Yeah, it looks it looks like he wants to go and it looks like he's got nowhere to go at the minute. Like Steve said, whether that's held up because Man U um, aren't actively doing anything about it because they want to keep him or just no one wants to uh, take the risk on him because he's 37. It's going to be very short term if he joins them. Um, so again, like I, I don't think he wants to be there. He's, it's, he's never played in the uh, Euro- Europa League. He's always played in the Champions League. Whether that's true or not, like uh, it, 
I, I, I personally, I think he should stay. Like he signed a contract. He scored goals last season. It was his, you know, one of his first clubs. He should show a bit of uh, loyalty and see how his contract there. But um, I don't know. You can never tell with the media whether they're whipping something up that isn't. But it, they've kind of portrayed it that he, he does want to go. But again, like it just doesn't look like anyone's going to take him. So he might be forced to uh, stay at Man United for the year. I'm sure he is being well rewarded for that year as well with whatever con- contract he's on. So um, he he should he should stay and play out the year uh, and again show a little bit of loyalty to Man Man United. It's just for the one season if that's all his contract is. Uh, suck it up. Okay, Mister Hinder, with rumours that they say he turned on. Uh, he has turned down multiple offers to go play in UAE and other countries in terms of big sums of money, insisting that it's all about Champions League. And from the way things are going, none of the big teams or the teams that can maybe potentially win the Champions League have come for him. Are we seeing him for one more season in the Premier League? Um, there's two points. One, didn't, they weren't in United. Uh, United weren't in the Champions League when he signed, were they? Yes, we were. were. So you had the season in there. So that was fine. So obviously he failed in his mission to make them a force. Um, Man, I don't want to say Man United are a joke team, but I have never seen such a poor transfer window from a top club or a perceived top club. You got your boss in early. Not a problem at all. Your second choice, third choice or whatever it was, but he was in. So that's signed. What They had no targets other than the whole Ajax team. Literally, well, Ajax weren't going to sell their whole team to United. That was ludicrous to think that you're going to get everybody in a, a, a price that you could pay. The Frankie de Jong thing, an absolute joke as well. Literally, what a joke from start to finish. Barcelona aren't helping themselves in any way, shape, or form. But if United really want him, just pay the 17 million off to them and bring him in. If he's that good, pay the extra money that that Barcelona owe on, on back pay for wages. But clearly, he's not that good. Or Man United's coffers aren't anywhere near as, as good as they, they could be. He's got Ronaldo. The whole thing stems from, from Ronaldo is the transfer window is a joke. Not really progressing anywhere. So why do I want to be here again for another season of not challenging? We're not going forward. I completely agree with certain elements of Duncan's conversation of he's got a contract, suck it up for a year. He's potentially earned the right to leave the club due to the fact that he didn't cost him a penny when he signed in the first place and left the other club for, for free. So there's there's a lot of in there. But United can't sign anyone. It just shows how bad it's got that, that this would never have happened under Fergie I know it's going my, back my, a long way but listen if a player wants to go you don't keep him because what happens keeping a player that doesn't want to play it just becomes sour the fans don't want him you know that he's, if he does a bad game it's, he doesn't want to be here rather than he's just had a bad game he's still one of the best players in the world but they're going to get on his back at some particular point. So you don't, you, they're not, the United aren't helping themselves on this, whether they're worried about the stock market, whether they're worried about the share prices plummeting even further than the lowest they've been ever currently um, because of the lack of everything else. It's really poorly run for different reasons. And Ten Hag has got his absolute mind, uh, mind filtered to, to deal with there. Benny McCarthy's come to be a coach, hasn't he? I think, I believe. So they're starting to sort out other bits, but they needed to get, players in early rather than relying on Ajax to say well yeah take them all go on go, go, go you go and play in the Prem and we will buy 25 new players don't worry about it. that was never going to happen stupid 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 uh, Dunk yes yeah can I just point out when I said last week that uh, Ajax would, would get their replacement for Martinez for 20 million and run away with the other 37 million in the bank they signed Bassi from Rangers for 20 million <laughs> So they they had that nicely done up, and it's again like they're talking about uh, signing Anthony as like their new strike player. Apparently, the price has gone up from you know sixty to eighty million because they've already ridden Man United for the thirty million or extra twenty million in the Martinez deal. So everybody yeah, they, knows, they, everybody knows at this point in time, Man United are desperate. Of course, up the price if they really want it. As you said, they will go for it. If not, they will lose out of the player. But like, but like Neil said earlier, like, like they had the manager in. Why, why is it taking so long? Why are they leaving it so? Like, why, why should Man U be, you know, desperate and be overcharging when, when other clubs don't seem to be in that situation? Like some other clubs have made some really good signings for in in the twenty to thirty million range. So with Lisandro Martinez, Malasia, Christian Eriksen, 
And uh, what's his name? Christian yeah. Eriksen was free and 200,000 a week to get him to go to United so, oh my like god that's, literally that's, that's Lingard money days oh it's just, <laughs> it's just yeah it must have kept him so, it's what, just ludicrous that they're paying that much for these players it's it's just gone wrong they're a mercenary club and it's not the United that you want to see and if you do then uh, I'm confused I don't know so, who I'm talking to you Eriksen 200,000 on a free Lissandra Martinez 57 Malaysia 13 million what is so? I mean, you probably expect that Man United should buy players quickly, or more all the players they want, and you expect Man United to pay seventy million for the young because they want him so badly they should pay Barcelona's what Barcelona is owing, and you think that would be a good first deal? of all they got Ericsson on uh-huh. a bit of a a bit of a whim, right? I don't think he was ever in the plans of coming along, and then what, suddenly what his he's... plans were or not, he's still there. Yeah, no, exactly. Okay. This is the problem. This is plan B. So they okay. must have plan B and C for everyone. They're still going for Frankie Young. They're still in talks of it. Just go no. You know what? This is ridiculous, Barca. And they'll sort it out and then we'll come back for you at uh, January or next year. Because at the moment, Barca are going to get sued if they don't back pay and they're signing new players. So they're in breach of a lot of issues in La Liga at the moment. And you'd think they'd want this resolved. So there's obviously something that's a little bit fishy and a little bit stinky going on with that. But United should just walk away. They, they don't walk away at the right time. You're going to get another Arsenal situation of them trying to get a striker that never wanted to go and that was just trying to get some money out of a of a of a better better deal. And it just stinks. And they've had too long to have a whole. They must have had twenty players on their list of, of, of potential targets, they, like for all the different positions. They've got Ericsson on a whim for a three. This on a thirteen million pound player and a sixty million pound defender basically it just I mean you can't be happy with that Ericsson I mean he's good for Brentford but is he United good are you now saying he's not good enough he's not no good he's not good enough United. for top four top six no <laughs> Ericsson <laughs> he's not okay he All was right. he, won the, we... he won the title of Inter before <laughs> anything oh, no. else like so <laughs> <laughs> Touche. <laughs> <laughs> he, like, I'm not saying that he's not good at a level, but there's a certain level, and I don't think he has got the intensity to be at that particular team under Ten Hag. He's got the intensity to be at Brentford and to be at the level where he is that man. But he isn't the man at he isn't the man at um at United. Even Spurs didn't go back in for him. Well, like the, now. The, the the thing about United, um, even though Ten Hag's come in um early, he he doesn't seem to he hasn't um, advertised his plan because he had opportunities to make changes at United as he's come in and he hasn't done it. For me, big mistake leaving Harry Maguire captain. He could have changed the ethos at the club by making someone else a captain, even if it was, yeah, he could have just picked someone else, give it to De Gea. When 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 the announcement was made, though, I agree with you in the sense that it was quite shocking and he hasn't, not that he needs to as a manager where he has to explain why his decision to maintain or leave Amaguire. I agree with you that it it will probably backfire because majority, based on the his performance last season, everybody's probably thinking, really? You're actually leaving this guy as captain? But somebody brought in some other kind of perspective. Maybe he's one of, going to be one of them captains that we don't play all the time. I don't know how that would work. Yeah, but, but that doesn't make sense. Do you mean because, a captain? And, and, and I think that actually caused the problem with Ronaldo. No, it happens. Henderson doesn't play all the time for Liverpool. He is club yeah. captain. It can, it could happen. Yeah, but Henderson's um, consistent. He and, and it was, slightly was different. consistently <laughs> terrible. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> and it was slightly different. Henderson was playing all the time when he was captain, and he's now he's still captain. Become, just on the bench. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah, but he's now become the club captain because he's not playing as much. But before a few seasons ago, he was captain and playing all the time. Yeah, and, and I don't think there's anything wrong with backing yeah, Maguire, no like in in the nicest possible way. If you're going to back him, you back him. But do you know what? Just not making him captain would have taken a bit of pressure off him, and mm-hmm. just said, actually, do you know what? That just for this season, Harry, you're not going to be captain. All right, next season, if you perform well, we will install you. Maybe at Christmas, we will install you. Until then, we will put the hair as captain. No one really wants a goalkeeper as captain. It doesn't really work out. It's just because no one else is got a mouth on the pitch, right? That's mm. the only way you ever want a goalkeeper as captain because the goalkeeper def- this is in charge of the uh, of the back four, but, and that's yeah. it, right? So it would have been it would have been pressure off. It'd have been like you know what you've, you've you've had a real stinker, and he must have known he'd had a stinker of a season. And if he didn't, 
I don't know where he's been living. He's not seen the internet or watched an entire game, right? But even by his own standards of well, how well he played for England and and was great for England. To be fair, it wasn't just good. He was great for England. That it's a it's a monument shift. But taking that pressure off would have been a burden off his shoulders. Even if he said he got a point to prove, you have to address it for the interest of the club, for his own personal benefit. Just for this season, six months. We're going to not give you captain. We're going to give you De Gea. He's a bloody cult hero at the club. Everyone knows he's captain fantastic and keeps us in it. No one would have batted an eyelid. And it wouldn't have been like, oh, I'm is not captain anymore. Or you've now got as a Titanic captain on this Titanic boat that's, well, we know what happens, right? <laughs> yeah. And so, ah, and so Ronaldo should down. stay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well we should see time will tell what happens i hope that door's big enough for two people at least right because it's floating off in the water we shall see what happens in my united and we'll see if ten hag has a plan that nobody else knows about is the well, 10 the position they will end up in the season is that why he's called ten hag good question we'll find out at the end of the season ten hag oh yeah, that's true it's actually <laughs> Okay, ladies and gentlemen, at Grassroots Chat, we are starting our own predictable league or fixture prediction league where the... Make it sound like we thought about it, JJ. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm trying to. I'm trying to. And uh, this is where everybody will pick, you know, certain games of the weekend, say their predictions, and then, of course, whoever gets it right the most... We'll lead the table and we'll see who comes up on top at the end of the season. So with the Premier League starting on the 5th of August with Crystal Palace Arsenal, I shall ask the men in the studio to give their, you know, predictions. And of course, you can follow this league table on our website on grassrootchats.com. So we're looking at four games for the upcoming Premier League weekend. And the first game we're looking at is Crystal Palace Arsenal. Big dunk. Uh, yeah, so I think I said last week, like where, you didn't ask for a prediction last week, but I gave it. Uh, I put this one down as Arsenal 2, Palace 1. So Palace improved a lot last season. Arsenal did lose them towards the end of the season. But if they've got ambitions of like finishing higher up the table this season, they need to uh, start strong, continue from their pre-season and get a result in a game like this. So I'm going Arsenal 2, Palace 1. Okay, Big Steve. Arsenal 3-1. All right, and Mr. Hinder? Um, 4-1 Arsenal. 4-1 Arsenal. Okay, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We're looking at one of the new boys coming up to the Premier League, Jesse Lingard's new team. Newcastle v Nottingham Forest on Saturday the 6th of August. Big Steve? 3-0 to Newcastle. 3-0 to Newcastle. Welcome in... Nottingham Forest in the Premier League. Big dunk. Yeah, I can't see Nottingham Forest getting all their new signings together. Uh, a fairly tricky game against a team that like had a bit of form at the end of the last season. So I will go. We'll give them, I'll give them a goal. I'll go for 3-1 to Newcastle. Okay, Mr. Hinder. Yeah, welcome to the Premier League. 5-0 Newcastle. <laughs> Joel Lintz is going to be on fire, man. <laughs> Such a midfielder, mate. I tell you. <laughs> Hat trick from midfield, man. Yeah. Be like, he should be playing up front. He's <laughs> definitely a striker. <laughs> nah, nah, he's playing midfield. Nah, he's a striker, yeah. Two teams that are struggling in the transfer window. Well, not particularly struggling. You know, yeah, you, no. you expect better. Signing three players, what big struggle. But talking about Everton v Chelsea, 6th of August, 5.30. Mr. Hinder? Everton v Chelsea. This is a hard one, aren't it? This is teams that can't score goals each. Let's go with one all draw. Okay. One all draw. Big Steve? 2 0 Chelsea. Mm, okay. And Dunk? Uh, I'll go for 3 1 Chelsea. Ster- Sterling on the score sheet somewhere. Sterling on the score and goal. sheet. All right. <laughs> there you go. And we look at reigning champions going away to West Ham. West Ham v. Man City on Sunday the 7th. Big Steve. 2-1 City. Dunk? Yeah, I'm going for a tight game as well. So I'll, I'll, I was going to say 2-1 because Steve says that I'll, I'll take 3-2. I'm going to do Neil's job. I'm just going to outdo him. <laughs> <laughs> 
And Mr. Hinder? 4 2. <laughs> to who? Does it matter? You just asked for the score. Uh, 4 2 to City. 4 2 to City. All this right. boy's got to be scoring some goals, right? Before he gets injured. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. You can follow our prediction league on our website, www.grassrootcharts.com. And we shall see how the boys do with all the games to come week in, week out. Well, we have come to the end of Play to the Whistle this week. Talking about the Lionesses and bringing the victory back. Looking at the Premier League and how we shall start, who shall win, top four, highest goal scorer, first manager to be sacked. And talking about Ronaldo, should he stay, should he go, before Mr. Hinder took the conversation to somewhere else. Okay, so it's been wonderful, people. Thank you very much for being in the studio. Big Steve, thank you. Thank you. Donk, thank you very much. Thanks for listening, all. Mr. Hinder, thank you very much. Yeah, so Grass you, guys. Grass you, you, you spoke! Grassroots Charts will be back, ladies and gentlemen, next week. And we shall back, we should be back with Play to the Whistle, the kickabout, which comes out every Wednesday. And eventually, we will start the technical area where we have guests in the studio. Till then, ladies and gentlemen, it's goodbye from me and more things.